All right. Thanks again for tuning in to the Cole Evans podcast. I really appreciate what, no matter what channel you're on, uh, we're on all the places. So thank you very much for listening, watching whatever channel you're on. I am extremely excited today to have a friend of mine, Valerie Morris on. Valerie is the founder of the Denver-based Tintero Creative, a digital marketing strategist, keynote author. We're going to get into that. If you uh, uh, check out the link in the bottom, I'll put a link in there uh, directly to We're All Ears, her very popular book selling on Amazon right now. And we're going to dive right into it. Valerie, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, thanks for asking and thanks for having me. So absolutely. So if I am uh, me and I am listening to this podcast and I hear you say Denver-based and then I look over your shoulder and I see that it's dark outside, you might be wondering exactly <laughs> what I was wondering, which is where in the world is she? And Valerie and her family are comfortably uh, located today live or pre-recorded uh, in Denmark right? So very, very yes. cool. Very cool. All right. Yes. So we're going to dive. like short-term expat situation <laughs> here. It's been an adventure. <laughs> so I was looking back, I think Valerie, I think we've been connected for a little over seven years at this point. Uh, Valerie has done uh, content writing and project management um, on some projects that she and I have worked on over years past. Um, and so I'm, I'm very connected. I'm looking at your LinkedIn um, right here on my other screen and have always, you know, really uh, watched and, and, and read and uh, just kind of followed your story because you've, you've got so many things going on. And um, I, what I want to do is dive in. The point of Cole Evans podcast is to educate people, whether you are receiving this on TikTok and you are 18 years old or you're on um, an email marketing newsletter and you read everything I put out, everyone in between, the goal is to give tactical bite-sized pieces of information, Valerie, to, to those all over the place. So we will dive right in. You've been working with small business owners for a long time. And um, yeah. I, I wanted to hear directly from you. Tell our audience, what is the biggest thing you're hearing, uh, pain points that your clients are telling you, you hear it over and over again today, as compared to say three, five years ago. Um, what, what are some of those things that you're hearing? Yeah. So one of the biggest things that I'm hearing people say is just they are struggling with the consistency and focus. And I think that's one of the biggest things with small business owners or really any business owner is, you know, having that focus to stay true to what your goals are. And it's hard because there are so many shiny objects in the marketing and business world right. that you can get really distracted. And so I think, you know, especially in marketing, you and I have seen time and time again, there are some tried and true methods that just continue to show up. And if you are faithful to some of those foundational things, you can add in the fun new things and try out the new flashy, fun, shiny objects. But if you keep your foundation of your marketing strategy in some of those core foundations, and I'm talking things like SEO, email, content, you are going to, you're going to stay consistent with your audience and you're going to win. You're going to build that long-term value that you're looking for. And then you can have fun with some of the flashier things, you know, test out TikTok, see if it's a benefit for your business, test out, you know, doing more with reels, test out having a podcast and see like, do I like this medium? You know, you can try some of these newer things, but keep it in line with your, your tried and true uh, strategy. And I think a lot of folks, they give up too soon, you know, they'll start a tactic and they'll be like, Oh, well I did three episodes of this podcast and I didn't, I didn't get what I wanted out of it. And you're like, well, the reality is like you get a whole lot more out of podcasting than you're going to see after just three episodes. Right. You know? And so many so people having uh, Valor, sorry to, to interrupt, but uh, a point here is it, um, it reminds me of a conversation I have on a regular basis with clients, which is you put a lot of time and money and energy into a piece of creative or an ad, and then you, you set it out on this one campaign and then you forget about it. And then you judge everyone and everything accordingly versus maximizing, you know, that, that, that asset, whatever that thing is, um, uh, consistency being key. I completely agree with you. Um, yeah. what, uh, so random, but I'm just going to bring it up. So I'm in the Chick-fil-A line last night getting uh, food and the guy in the drive-thru taking the order, he sneezes and the, 
the van in front of me uh, says, oh, bless you. And so this just stuck with me for whatever reason, right? I think I was more hung up that he took the time to pet the dog in the car and not actually let me order my meal. I digress. So uh, this morning, I'm thinking about consistency. I'm thinking about repetition. And a couple of things stood yeah. in my mind as a 43-year-old white man is um, when I was going to school, my elementary school teacher told us, and, and we visually saw him every day, eat carrots. And he said, you have to eat carrots because it improves your eyesight. And this was the mm. same, this was the same principle. I saw walk into a room and sit down every single year and walk in the classroom and he would memorize every single person's name in the classroom. And he would know your name there on out period. He, he, it was, it was really cool to see. My point here is I was convinced, well, you have to eat carrots to help your eyes. Like the principal does it every single day. I was convinced you have to say bless you when someone sneezes because your heart stops. All of which are complete lies, right? <laughs> we know that carrots, <laughs> we know that carrots don't actually help your, your vision at all. And, uh, and we know that your heart does not stop. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so my point here is why do I believe that? I believe it because it's, re it was repetitively told to me over and over mm -hmm. and over yeah. again. And so um, you and I are saying it in different ways, but really in the same way, uh, consistency is key. I ask every single client, every prospect before we really get started, tell me two things that you've done consistently over the past two years and mm, uh, overwhelming, overwhelmingly outside of an email campaign or, or updating a website or something here and there, the answer is always nothing. Yeah, I, it's true. You know, what's interesting is I was at a national speakers association event in Denver a few weeks ago. And the, the president, uh, I don't know her last name, first name is Meredith, but the president of the NSA for the nation came and spoke at our chapter's event. And she quoted a study. I had to go fact check it because I was like, I don't know if I believe this. She quoted that it, the sales process, it's not seven to 12 touches. It's more like 28 touches. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. Yeah. And everyone in the room was shocked too. So I went afterwards and I'm, I'm fact checking this to see, are there actually articles that are supporting this stat? Sure enough, there are. And so when you think about that, you think about, okay, I'm going to give up after three podcast episodes. Yeah, I'm going to exactly. give up after running Facebook ads for three weeks. Um, you know, the amount of, of impressions you have to have with people for them to convert to being a paying customer or a paying client, it's, it's, it's immense when you think about 28 touches of someone. So if you're not being consistent, those 28 touches are not going to have any sort of strategy or flow. They're going to be so haphazard that you're lucky if somebody comes on as a customer. So why not, instead of luck, like let's focus on just having a few systems in place and sticking with some of those foundations that may not feel as sexy, right? Like it's not always going to be like the millions of views on one video, but it's those consistent, you know, 50 to a hundred or a thousand views that are what are going to really make the difference for your business. And that's, I think what people struggle with when they think about marketing, they think, Oh, I'm going to put this out there and I'm going to get this like huge spike and I'm going to, it's going to change everything for my business. It's usually these like small incremental moves that over time you look back and you're like, oh yeah, that moved the needle a ton, but it wasn't this like immense spike all at once. Sometimes it is, but usually it's that gradual little by little, the impressions build, it becomes a snowball. I, I couldn't uh, agree more. Uh, a recent stat that I heard uh, for TikTok specifically, it was either 40, I don't think 48 was too much, so I think the next number is actually true, which is 42. 42% 42 of people on TikTok have never created a video on TikTok. And so think about, you know, I, I think about, you know, again, rewind just a couple of decades when we just had cable or we listened to the radio, whatever the situation right. is, not everyone that was participating in those channels lined up to put creative on those channels. And today mm -hmm. we all do and we can, but the, the, the misconception that you doing a dance on this thing and getting, you know, X number of things is now setting you up to 
package these PDFs and now sell them to people at a, at a subscription rate. I think there's a there's a, a misnomer out there. Uh, question number two. Yeah, for tip, sure. Tip for entrepreneurs getting started. So um, I uh, am I kind of made this challenge to myself to get more active on uh, TikTok. And and this is, I am slow and steady wins the race. Uh, but I will um, I will tell you when I look at the stats, it's obviously still very much younger. And um, tell me a little bit about what a tip would be uh, from you, Valerie, to an entrepreneur that is, you know, they're in high school, hating, you know, 10th grade to, um, you know, thinking about college to I'm not doing college and that's not my thing. I'm, I'm going to go out here and work and I've got to put out content. Tell, let's talk for a, a couple of minutes about those that are like you and I, right? So we can jump on and do a thing and put out content. The overwhelming majority of people are not like that. And, and it's hard yeah. to say that if you're just consuming it all day, but the majority of people get very anxious in front of a device. They don't know what to say, but they might be really big subject matter experts in a thing. Tell our audience a little bit about tips. You know, if I had to go back and go, go do it all again, if I was starting my business all over, I would be focused on building my email list. And what I love about that is you could be using TikTok, you could be using Snapchat, you could be using Facebook, Instagram, any of the tactics. There's so many different digital channels that regardless of what trends change, email has stayed like a central hub right. across all of it. You have to have email in order to have accounts on all these platforms. Email is not going away. In fact, I feel like it's actually growing in importance because the, all these platforms are, are, there's just so much stuff everywhere mm -hmm. that people kind of come back to their inbox as like their central hub, you know? And if you're providing value in the inbox, there's a lot of just long-term value there that you can take and use that in that list to sell to, to engage with, to network with. You can do so much with it um, and you own it. It's yours. You're not playing on a rented space on a social platform. I wish I would have done more with building my list earlier on and been more intentional with that from the start. And, and that can work for any business, whether you're service-based, whether you're selling widgets, you're right. selling a product, right. or you have a service-based business like, like you and I do, um, you can really do a lot with an email list. And I just, I wish I would have put more attention there from the start um, because I think it would have opened up a lot more doors long-term for me uh, versus feeling like, um, maybe playing catch up for some of these things that I want to do in my business today. So I, I, again, I completely agree. I, um, so let's, let's take it down uh, a couple of notches. So let, let me give tactical bullet points that I think work in my head. So maybe it'll work for a couple of our listeners. So, um, I am a huge advocate of MailChimp, uh, any service, they basically all do the same thing, but I love MailChimp, even though we're not sponsored by MailChimp, the, um, being able, hint, hint, MailChimp. that's right. Even though we took, uh, we talked a couple of minutes ago about creating that asset and really maximizing it. Using, uh, to Valerie's point, the, the home base, uh, email marketing to show that video again, to show uh, that blog that you wrote six months ago that's still very relevant to what's going on today, to give um, uh, a curated um, place for business owners, uh, p people in your network, people that have signed up to say... I, 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 I say this to, to clients on a regular basis. If you have the email address, you have the all cut, you have the most important thing as far as a contact outside of the cell phone number, right? This is how yeah. you reach me. It, it's, I think it's more important than the, the physical address, right? We all know that I, I actually skim before I hit delete on uh, my email. Whereas, you know, if it looks like, smells like, feels like a postcard and I'm not expecting a postcard, you know, that's getting chunked right out of the gate. So, uh, consistency and focus is what I've heard you say, Valerie, 28 touches. That's a big, big number, but it plays directly into completely staying consistent and then building your email list. Guys, uh, if you have, uh, liked this content, please, uh, check out all the links below. You can follow Tentera Creative, follow Valerie on all of her channels. All of the links will be below. Uh, Valerie, uh, last, last question here and around being a business owner. Okay. So, um, I, I was thinking earlier, I was like, as a female business owner, and I, I'm not, um, disrespecting the fact that you're a female, but I don't want to paint a broad brush and, you know, so as a business owner, 
tell our audience, mm -hmm. tell our audience, if you could look back, I really like how you just said, when you said, if I could go back, I would really focus on, on email, uh, as a, uh, entrepreneur, someone who I'm sure in 14 years, as I have, have experienced very good highs and very bad lows, tell uh, our audience a little bit about, uh, big lessons that you've learned over those 14 years and starting running, growing a family in the middle, all the things that happen mm -hmm. when you're 14 years in a business. Yeah. You know, one of the best, one of the best things that I did, even from the start, and I still continue to do this today, is I regularly surround myself with other people who are going in the direction I want to be going in. And, um, you know, sometimes they're in similar spots as I've been in. Sometimes they're maybe a little bit further behind than I am. Maybe they're newer to business or they're not as far along in whatever. Some people are way ahead of me. And I like surrounding myself with people who, even if they're not in the same spot as me, we're all going in the same direction because their energy rubs off on me. Their goals, their motivation, you know, whether they're actually achieving it or I'm just perceiving them achieving it, I get a little bit of, you know, com competitive whatever, and it kicks the accountability in the gear for me of like, if they're out doing it, I can do it. And so I just have really learned a lot just from the proximity of being surrounded by like-minded people. And you can do that really at any stage of your business. And it'll look different as you go, you know, the caliber of, of folks that I'm surrounding myself with or the proximity, whether it's, you know, hyper local geographically versus like nowadays, like I'm in masterminds of people that are, you know, all over the world, right. you know, and, and thanks to technology and the pandemic, like that kind of interaction feels a hundred percent normal for people to do. Um, I've learned so much just from surrounding myself with people who are going in the same direction as I want to be going in. That's probably been one of the best things that I've done. And if I had to go back and do it all over again, I would still focus on diving into those kinds of relationships. I've grown a lot personally. I've grown as a business owner. I've also gotten a lot of referrals out of those relationships, right. which that's helped grow my business in a very tangible way. But I've gotten a lot just on a personal level from the proximity with those kinds of folks. It's interesting, Valerie, as you're saying that, I, I was sitting here thinking, you know, from... <laughs> attending very, you know, from small networking groups to being a, a chair in a, in a chamber of commerce and kind of, you know, really being forced into a lot of, uh, networking to starting and kind of growing for a couple of years, my own, uh, networking group. You're exactly right. Comma. I do think that it's, it's very difficult for, you know, a few years younger than us that are very accustomed to commenting and dropping and did it to, get out of their home and to go to a physical place where there are actual mm -hmm. other humans and interact with them. Uh, so, so many, I'm sitting here thinking of my top referral partners right now. Um, while I might engage with them here, I've, there's so much, there was so much more of a connection when we met years ago in face-to-face -face conversations that had nothing to do about business. It was about getting to know yeah. them as a person. Yeah. Uh, and, and hopefully that is not getting lost on, mm -hmm. you know, um, I don't even say it's generations. I think it's just people that are in their own world right now. And maybe that's a lot more technology, right? Oh, so, but I mean, I feel socially awkward when I go out in person at things. And I think part of that is the fact that since COVID, I've had two kids. And so, you know, you pair the pandemic with then having two young kids in the house. You're not going out much. Right. I feel socially awkward just talking with friends who aren't entrepreneurs, but <laughs> put me in a networking scenario and I'm like, oh, you know, like, it's like I've never done this before. Right. So I think, you know, there is a lot of that of just like, whether regardless of age, I think COVID really pushed a lot of us back, you know, into our shell a little bit and it takes a little bit to get comfortable again. Couldn't agree more. Valerie, get some rest. I know it's almost nine o'clock there in Denmark. I'm so happy that you jumped on uh, with me to record here. Again, guys, if you want to follow um, Valerie and all of her story and all the places, check out all the comments below and all the places where the descriptions are. Valerie, thank you so much for jumping on. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. This was fun.